Anyway, you have a hot flash for you. Welcome back to Harbaugh. That's Barack Obama's going to be on Countdown with Keith Oberman tonight at 8 o'clock. That's going to be quite an event because he has to answer that question that everybody once answered about his relationship to that radical preacher uh, whose church he's been attending all these years. Anyway, welcome back. As I said, Hillary Clinton's uh, 3 a.m. TV ad has gotten a lot of attention. It's credited with helping her win in Texas a couple weeks ago. There's the ad. But Harvard professor Orlando Patterson took issue with the ad's message in a New York Times ed piece earlier this week. He wrote, quote, when I saw those Clinton ads, central image was innocent sleeping children and a mother in the middle of the night at risk of mortal danger and brought to my mind scenes from the past. I couldn't help but think of D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation, the racist movie epic that helped revive the Ku Klux Klan with its portrayal of black men lurking in the bushes around white society. The danger implicit in the phone ad, as I see it, is that the person answering the phone might be a black man, someone who could not be trusted to protect us from this threat. Did Clinton's ad have a divisive racial message? The author of that New York Times piece, Professor Orlando Patterson of Harvard, says yes. And we also have joining us now MSNBC political analyst Michard, Michelle Bernard, who says no. Professor, I kind of agreed with you, and I want you to express your view. Uh, what is it in the ad that suggested to you that the Clinton campaign was playing on racial fears in their campaign against Barack Obama? Well, first of all, if you do a simple experiment, just um, press the mute button on your TV and look at the ad. And what you see is really not images which suggest um, foreign invasion or terrorists. What you see is something that reminds you of uh, ad by uh, brings on about uh, home security, um, homes being invaded and um, by intruders at night so about to attack young children and, and mothers. and. Um, if you show everything is context, if you show that ad in the Deep South, and then you're being at the very least provocative. And because the images that come to mind for the vo kind of voters which Clinton wa uh, was getting at, which is largely sort of working class white voters, um, is not foreign um, um, terrorists. Foreign terrorists don't creep up at 3 o'clock in the night. Foreign terrorists want to attack in broad daylight where they can get maximum coverage. What comes to mind is the sort of real images from the Deep South, uh, they associated with blacks and um, black intruders at night. It is um, very much an image of um, uh, that too is to resonates too strongly with, at least in the context of the South, um, uh, 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 notions of black men as, uh, as intruders. And um, I thought it was extremely irresponsible to air uh, uh, an ad like that. If you have an opponent who is an Italian-American, you don't use images from the soprano. If you have an, uh, an opponent who is a Mormon, you don't use white crosses. If you have an opponent who is uh, Jewish-American, you don't use images of uh, moneylenders juggling coins. And um, that's the point. It's the, everything has to do with the context, who your opponent is, who your audience is, and in the Deep South, you don't use images of um, white women and blonde children being um, uh, uh, being uh, threatened by um, what is clearly uh, a domestic in, uh, in, intrusion. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. Your view, Michelle. You know, I mean, it's interesting because I don't. I, I didn't see this ad um, as a 911 ad, as you've said. You know, yeah, I see it more of a 911 yeah, ad than 911. I, I think it's a call about a woman calling out because somebody's trying to break into the house. That's what I saw. Yeah, I, I exactly. don't see it that way. I, I, I mean, I, I hear what I hear what the professor is saying. I don't see it that way. And I think maybe the way you receive the ad really might have something to do with gender, because really every woman I have spoken with, whether she is black or white, Hispanic or whatever, um, I haven't talked to anyone yet who sees the ad as anything other than a foreign policy ad. I really believe, I see the smile on your face, but I got to tell you, I mean, people are taking it this way, and I understand what the professor is saying, but I also think that this was an appeal to women who are very worried about their did children. Did you try it with men? Uh, yeah, I did try it with men. What was men. the reaction? Black men really see it the way the professor does. They see it as a 911 ad ver versus a, a 911 ad, but women really take it differently. If you go back to 2004 and you think about the Bush administration's um, ch uh, the Bush, administ Bush administration's decision to go after security moms in 2004, right after the Belson School Massacre, it was called the most horrific uh, act of terrorism after 9-11. It happened on September 1st, 2004. You saw droves of women voting for George Bush, uh, voting for George Bush as, um, on a national security issue. And I think lots of women were looking at this and thinking, this could be my child. I want to protect my children. Why I mean, three in the morning? Well, because your kids are asleep. 
Why is that well, important a to a terrorist attack? Let me go, Professor, your thought here. Yeah, but wait a minute. Um, uh, where is daddy? Where are the men? Are, are, do terrorists go after children and women? They don't. I mean, this, this ad um, could easily have made its point, as did the, um, the, 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 the ad by the, the person who made this one um, uh, for Walter Mondale years ago, which used a red telephone.